Hey everybody, this is Jason with Lone Star Catfish. Uh, so I'm out here on the north end of the main lake uh, in the big boat today, obviously. Um, I ended up taking last weekend off, decided to play a golf tournament, and then Super Bowl Sunday, I was just uh, too tired to, to bother with it. Uh, but I'm out here today, uh, I managed to catch a, a little bit of bait, not a lot, but um, I do have some fresh shad. Also picked up some chicken hearts on the way out here, um, just in case. Um, so today uh, is going to be an interesting day. Um, we've got some, uh, some storms rolling in later this afternoon. Uh, the wind has picked up quite a bit, uh, but the pressures are falling, and that isn't time that I like to fish. Um, I found myself a little bit of a, a point that comes out here, uh, and I've got a, a pretty good break from the wind. I mean, it's actually coming, it's rolling right out here to, to, uh, to my right. Um, and then it's just kind of circling around this point. I've backed up in here, I've got my power poles down, um, and I'm going to just fan cast out around this area. I didn't see a lot of activity uh, on the sonar, but I did see quite a bit on the side scan. Now there's no telling what that is, um, but we're going to find out here. So I'm going to start, I mean, anywhere from two to three feet of water all the way out to probably eight, nine, or ten feet, depending on how far I can uh, cast out. I've got a combination of Santee Cooper rigs. Uh, so these little floats uh, setting above these circle hooks. I've got a couple bigger hooks that I'm going to throw a little bit deeper out. Um, it'll be some cut shad, there'll be some chicken hearts, um, and depending on how the day goes, I've got a couple more rods left over. Uh, I may put some uh, dip bait, some prepared bait on, and see what I can't find. Uh, you know, the goal today is just to catch some fish, um, channels or blues, uh, it doesn't matter, but I just wanted to get back out here on the big boat. Um, and give that a go. So um, I'm going to get these rigged up, cast out. Um, hopefully we'll have some activity. That was finally a good bite. Had something messing with this front right one. And he's still messing with it, but he's not taking it. This one then suddenly went down pretty good. Well, this is the chicken heart right here. We've got something on that uh, good hook set on that chicken heart. Look at that, he didn't even get the chicken heart. Great hook set right in the top of the mouth. All right, skunk buster. Call him 15 inches. Nice start. Let's get him back in the water. Let's keep going. Another thing I always like to experiment with is, you know, I've got these Santee Cooper rigs on. And what I found is when I'll try the Santees versus just your standard uh, Carolina rig, usually one or the other will produce and the other will not. Um, you know, certainly, you know, sometimes if they're just hitting everything, it doesn't matter what you throw out there. And I, I found that it has a lot to do with the bottom. You know, if it's a little bit of a brushier bottom um, with some stuff, you know, um, there's just stuff down there and cover. You know, just having that that um, this bobber on there just gets that up just enough. Other days it doesn't matter. If it's a sandy bottom, it seems like they'll go and pick it up off the bottom. But more often than not, these floats seem to produce more fish. It's also interesting that that fish that I caught, that's right where that point ends and that and that wind is curling around. So that could end up proving to be a good spot as you know maybe they're uh, stacking up right there, waiting for that wind to come around. The thing I like to do with those Santee Coopers too, and I don't know if it matters, but it, you know when I cast those out, sometimes it seems like that cork you know could land short you know, uh, of the weight, and then when it falls, it's going to be all tangled up. So whenever it hits the water, um, I like to go ahead and get that line tight, you know, before it hits the ground, and just, just pull it a little bit, just straighten everything out so that weight will touch, the, the bobble will come up, uh, and then the hook. So um, I've, already, I've just recasted this out. I've already got some action on it. There we go. There we go. Yo, he was running with it. Still running. All 
right, much better blue. He, uh, that was on shad right there. And that, I tell you, I had reeled that in. I had gotten some nibbles on that, and I wanted to just reel it in and make sure that my shad was still in there. It was. I threw it back out there, and before I could even uh, turn around and talk to the camera, it was down. So he's got that hooked really good. It kind of went through the side of his eye. There we go. All right, blue number two, 16 and three quarters. Not bad. Trending in the right direction. Let's just keep going. That's a nice blue, though. That's a pretty good, that's a good eating blue. Not today. First channel cat of the day. That came on that nice big perfect circle hook. And that's a pretty good channel cat right there. It's about 15 and a half inches. So I expected to get some channels up in here. Um, so it's not surprising. But that's a good channel cat. Okay, so it's been about an hour. Um, with lines in the water at this spot. Uh, I've caught three fish um, and it's been pretty spread out. You know, easily one every 20 minutes. Um, so I'm going to um, reel everything in and try one more new spot. Uh, this, is, this is a spot I've never fished before. Um, you know, a lot of it was, you know, I do like this point. I do like the depth changes that are here. And of course, it, there was a wind break. There's one more spot just a little further up the river it's very similar, um, just get on the back side of an island, should be mostly out of the wind, and then there's some depth right behind it. Uh, I'm going to give that a try for about an hour, um, and then um, unless that spot really starts producing, uh, I'm going to go to a spot that I have been successful at in the past um, and give that a try for the rest of my time out here. So uh, I'm going to get these reeled in and moved, and uh, we'll be back with you shortly. All right, there's fish number four, fish number one at this new spot. I tell you, he had he had that circle hook way down in his mouth, and I thought, oh no, he swallowed it. Uh, well, he hadn't swallowed it; it was sitting down there. But I don't think it was hooked real good. And I, when I went to lift him up, it came loose, and it just skin grabbed him. You know, just just grabbed just the lip, this very lip, as I got him in, or he was popping off. Uh, but that's a pretty good fish right there. Um, and that was a good takedown. So that was on cut shad on the bigger hook. Um, I did downsize the bait a little bit. Um, so maybe that's that's part of the key. But uh, let's give him a measure. Okay, he's about 20 and one half. All right, so that's my first 20 plus, barely, but there, good fish. Hopefully that's a sign uh, that there are some fish here. That was out in the deeper part, so casting out the front of the boat. Um, so let's see what else is in here. All right, y'all, so this is another spot. It's almost identical uh, to the previous one. I mean, I'm just behind this little island. Um, I've got the wind kind of uh, blowing hard out here to my right, um, and it's kind of circling around this point. I'm mostly out of the wind. Uh, power poles back in here in a couple feet of water uh, and then fan casting out and uh, anywhere from two to maybe seven to eight feet out here in front of me and then again off to this side um, so I'm gonna give this you know I was in had lines in the water about 12 15 I'll probably give this to about 1 or 1 15 depending on the rate uh, of bites and fish and then I'm gonna head over to the other side um, and like I said hit a, hit a spot that I've had some success at and probably spend the rest of the day there uh, hopefully this will produce, um, and you know we can stay here a while. All right, 
carries a fish on here, but I think he's got himself tangled up. I'm gonna work myself to the front of the boat here. All right, so I got a fish on here. He has managed to get himself tangled up. I can still feel him pulling. But he is tangled up, so I'm gonna give him a second and see if he comes loose. Boy, I feel him pulling and he's wrapped around something. This is gonna be one of those fish I leave. I'm gonna have to leave on the hook and, and literally just get him on the way out. All right, so other than that one good takedown, um, I haven't got really any more nibbles. Uh, I actually do still have a fish on this back left rod. Um, I am going to go ahead and reel everything in and then do my best Houdini act here to try to hold that rod, get the power poles up, get the boat turned around and over to where that line is. Hopefully I can get it out. With the way this wind's blowing though, I'm not sure because it's, it's gonna be nearly impossible to hold myself in a single spot. Hopefully I can get over there, it's shallow enough, I can get the boat situated, maybe put the power poles back down and then work on it. Uh, but this is gonna be fun, so we're gonna give it a try. Um, I hope it's a big fish, because <laughs> I'm going through a lot of trouble for it. But I also don't wanna lose the rig, so if it's just a little brush pile or something that I can reach down and pull up, I've got a, I've got a hook back here that I may be able to reach down. Um, if I can save it, I wanna save it. Number one, I don't wanna lose the rig. Number two, I don't wanna leave that crap in the water. There's enough of that junk in the water. so. Um, I'm going to give it the old college try here, so let's see what we can do. Success! That wasn't too difficult. Like he was just wrapped around something just short of 16 inches so uh, we're gonna go hit this other spot uh, for the rest of the day so here we go all right so first fish at this spot uh, I just simply couldn't make that other spot work the wind was just too much and it was kind of cutting around that corner so it wouldn't even hit me straight on I was kind of getting like this little eddy of wind um, could not get the anchors to hold me steady enough to, to, to tight line um, so I just, I just cut it loose. I've come over here, same plan as before. I, um, I've got a little wind blocked behind me. Uh, this time the wind's off to my left and I'm just fan casting out into this little channel, this little canal that runs uh, by these homes that run through here. Um, already got a couple bites, got one in the boat. Um, I'm probably gonna stay here the rest of the day. It is nasty out there. So when I finally get going, I'm gonna have to really, really close everything down and make sure there's nothing loose. Cause it's gonna be a bumpy ride and uh, you know, back down the lake to the dock. So, but I'm gonna spend a couple hours here and relax uh, before I gotta do that. So, not bad, little blue cat. We got 15 and a half, 16 inch range. It's a good start. Hopefully, uh, I'll be happy to catch you know five or six more of these in these next couple hours. I'll call that a good day. So, let's keep going. All right, fish number two at this spot. Not very much to him. Smallest of the day, about 12 and a half inches. Pretty good little blue cat right there. Shad definitely seems to be what they're hitting. Uh, not getting really any love on these chicken hearts. Uh, he's right at 17 inches. Good solid fish. Let's see if we can't keep doing it. big bite for a, a not too big a fish, but he got that hook in his mouth. He's right at 15 inches, so. Well, I wasn't joking, not big fish. That will definitely be the smallest of the day. He's still got his spots, little channel cat. Stretch his tail out to 12 inches, but don't need to because he's going back, so. Definitely the smallest of the day. about 14 inches. It's like a little channel cat. Like a little channel cat. It's in that 13 inch range. Alright everybody, so that is going to do it for me today. 
uh, the bite has slowed from the already slow that it was to next to nothing. Um, so I'm going to batten down the hatches here. I've got just about everything picked up. I just got one line left in the water to see if I couldn't catch one more fish. Um, and then I'm going to get ready. Uh, it's going to be a fun ride back. Uh, you know, nothing this boat can't handle, so it won't be unsafe, but it's going to be bumpy. Uh, it's just going to be one of those days I'm going to have to get out there and get on plane and bounce across the top of the, wa uh, the waves and shorten them up a little bit, but it's going to be fun. You know, it was a slow day, but I caught fish. Um, it's always a challenge fighting the wind. You know, I picked three spots out of the wind and, and did okay. Um, the one spot that I tried to fish in the wind was just a mess and never really even got lines in the water. Um, so it was just too much for me today. So, but um, you know, not a waste. I caught fish. I got a little bit of bait uh, to take back for a kayak trip. But other than that, that's going to be it for me today. Um, try to find some time next weekend to get out, uh, probably in the kayak, um, and go see what uh, what's going on as you know things start to warm up here in Houston a little bit. We, we're still getting a few little cold fronts here and there. Um, but, you know, even though it's early February, I can see us, you know, we're starting to warm up. Things are starting to, uh, I mean, the trees are starting to bloom, leaves are starting to grow. So, um, you know, spring is, is headed this way pretty quick. So hopefully the fish are going to start getting a little bit more active uh, and I can get back to what I was doing, uh, you know, before the winter hit. So that was all. Thanks for watching. We'll see you. Much attention, not enough attention.